Hi, I'm Sherry from Homeschooling on a Wing and a Prayer blog. I thought I would share with you the astronomy program we will be using with my high school student. As you can see, it says from 10th to 12th grade, but you could certainly use this for 9th grade. My son is kind of in between 9th and 10th, and maybe even a precocious 8th grader. You would have to kind of look at the teacher's guide and see if it would be a good fit or not. This is a master books program, and it uses Taking Back Astronomy our created moon, the stargazer's guide to the night sky, and then two videos. I did not purchase this book. It is a little expensive and I can get it through my library. And so I thought that that's the best way to go. I'm not too sure about the videos yet. They're not super spendy, but I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. We might just skip those. I have plenty of other things to keep them busy. And then while I was at convention, I actually thought this book was the one that was required about the moon. It's not. It's by astronaut James Irwin, and it's Destination Moon, but it's a really nice book. I paid under five bucks for it, and I'm like keeping it, and I'll just have him read through that as well. Now, with the master book guides, basically what you get is the chart, if you will, or however you want to call this, assignment layout. There we go. For each book, and what I do is I make a photocopy of this, and then I punch it and stick it in my homeschool planner so as I'm going through the weeks I can see where I need to be I can check off what we have done and I can also record his grade to put over in the grade sheets later then each book will have worksheets for the chapters and what you do is you print this off and the student will obviously read whatever it is they're required to read answer the questions and then they take these and use them as their study guide for their tests which are also in here and that's how easy it is. I haven't gone through here enough to see if there's like any experiments or anything quite yet. I just haven't had the opportunity. I'll let you know about that down the road. Like I said, we probably won't even get to this until January. Well, heck, I don't even know if I told you that. We will probably start this in January because we are still wrapping up the archaeology. And he will start the applied engineering in September here. And I just didn't want to overwhelm him or me. And we also have a huge history program with a lot of reading, so I needed to temper it back a little bit. Now, if you have a child who's interested in astronomy, I have not used this particular program, but I will be using this book so I can let you know after we're done. They have the intro to astronomy from grades 7 to 9, and they have the uh, Stargazers book and then their guide. Or they have the um, weather and astronomy with the guide. Now I actually have a second, the older version of the astronomy. I was going to purchase the new one and then after that I'm like, eh, nah. I will just use this, put this in there where we need to and just kind of add it in as a little bonus extra. But what I did do is pick up the new weather book. I did this so that we could work on this this summer and yeah. You know how, if you've been watching my updates, you know our summer has gone a little bit astray. So we didn't really get to this, and that's okay. So he'll also be doing a little bit of weather work. I did not get the guide or anything. I just wanted to keep it kind of fun, because him and his father really enjoy meteorology and such. And so I thought, well, yeah, let's just have him go through that on his own or do quick little lessons with that. So... Keep in mind that you can just order their catalog and they have some really great stuff. I'm telling you, the quality is beautiful. It's all hardback. They're nicely printed. They have good graphics. I really like their products and they're not overly expensive. Now, because this child is number four in the lineup, I have a lot of goodies that I'm just going to stick in and use and, you know, put wherever we can. In the past, I've used these solar charts and these star charts for the other children. I couldn't tell you where I got them or if they're even in print anymore. I'll kind of go through and do some research if I have to, if you're interested, but um, yeah. So this one is the solar system and it's a big thing. And what we'll do is just lay it out on the floor and look at it. See, it's kind of crazy stuff. If we need it for reference, this one I like a little bit better. This has all the stars and such in it. And um, that's kind of nice because we will definitely be definitely be learning the different stars and all that. 
And of course, just like typical maps, trying to fold it back up is always a challenge. Uh -huh. All right, this is what happens to things you can't fold. It goes on the floor. Done. Also, I have some other books I pulled out that are really good for the younger set. I had these for my son when we did the Apologias uh, elementary level astronomy. And so here's this little dude, Little Library Planets. I probably got this off of Amazon. I couldn't tell you where or how much I paid. Of course, us born, where would we be without them? So I had these, and not all of it is about space, but we can definitely go in here and just research and see some little fun things in there. I have them. We might as well use them. This was another one I picked up at that time, and this is a good one for the younger set. The first guide to the universe, but again, we can always go through here and pull out little niblets of information. That's always good. And this is one that I used way back when. Um, Janice Van Cleve's Astronomy for Every Kid. Now this has experiments. I briefly went through this again and I'll go back through it as I'm looking at the chapters in the um, guide and see if I can correlate any of these experiments to match and that it will be a little bit more of his lab work that I can count that. Here's another Osborne book on discovery. It doesn't have just everything about space. It has navigators and all kinds of goodies in there as well. So this sits out in our reference basket. I love Dover coloring books because you can do so much with them and you can make copies of these. You just have to read on the interior how many it says you can make. Some books are kind of funny. They'll say like no more than four of the pages or some are 10 and it's just funny like that so just read inside there for making copies and I don't use them all I just will maybe like he likes this particular one and he wants it in his science notebook then I'll print it off for him and he can color it so these are always great things to have I also found this program a while back and I have to say it's actually a really good one it's astronomy for all ages. It's a little more intense, and it certainly isn't something that will follow from cover to cover. The reason why I like it is it explains things really well, but it has graphics and things like that that you can put in to your notebook or just keep it in a folder and little projects to do. So again, we're talking, what is this? We're talking, um, there's Jupiter's observation. You do have to have a telescope for this. I have one my brother gave me. It's not the highest quality and we're still trying to figure out how to use it correctly. But if you have a good one, this would be a great one to attach to it. But there's some fun activities in here. As you can see, I've already gone through and tabbed the ones I want to take a closer look at and make copies of. I also found this in my pile of goodies. It's uh, Kids Discover and it happened to be Galaxies. And I'm telling you, I used to get this for my kids way back when, so I don't even know when this particular one was published, but I wanted to throw it in there because it's got some nice pictures, and it's always got fun to learn some of the little ditties on these things, so we have that. And then my beloved brother had given me this. I haven't a clue where he found this, probably at a garage sale or some discount store. I don't know. I did look it up, and you can still purchase this through Amazon used, but be aware that some of those are going to be shipped from the UK, so the shipping's going to be really high. There are a few that are filled through Amazon, so it might be worth the money. I think the one on Amazon is like 20 bucks, so you really have to decide if this is something you want. He gave it to me, and I love this is the best thing in the world. So you just kind of move your thing around depending on what time of year it is, and it tells you what stars are in the sky absolutely love this we will definitely be using that and then it has a couple little books in here as you can see I've started to go through and mark out some stuff again great artwork it shows you like what stars to look for in the different seasons love that and this one has a little more information in it as well it's missing the flashlight but that's no big deal we have plenty of flashlights in the, our house so that's a little extra and last but not least, I believe I received this originally as a review when I was doing the Old Schoolhouse review. It's a download, but I think you might be able to buy it already printed. I'm not sure. But this is by Carrie Beck. It may have been updated since I've had it. 
I hope so because I found a couple errors or some things that could have used a little more work. But um, you know what? It was free. This is actually my key. And then what I do is I just printed it out and I had the student, let's see, where did we get this from? The curriculumconnection.net. And then uh, the student will read, and then this uh, is Christian based, so you will pull in Bible verses to kind of answer these questions and put it all together. There is the Star of Bethlehem DVD that I purchased um, because I wanted to, and it wasn't too expensive. Now, I am going to say, some of this stuff has to be taken with a grain of salt because no one is alive today that was actually there to witness this. This is kind of everybody kind of speculating on what they think is it was and how it all worked out. So keep it kind of light. Just keep that in mind. Um, I did find it interesting, though, uh, their perspective on how they felt that the star, what the Star of Bethlehem was and how people viewed it. So, you know, and it does pull in Bible verses, which I really enjoy. So we usually start this mid-November and we get it done in time for Christmas. So I thought I'd share that with you as well. So, like I said, I do have a telescope. It's not in the classroom yet. I'll bring it up. And as you can see, I have oodles of extras to add into this study. Oh, somebody just sneezed. And uh, the map charts and all that. But this will be our main program. And um, because I haven't used it yet, I can't tell you any more than what I have now. This looks good. I've used other... Um, master book programs and I, I find it works through quickly and not it's not so intense that it overwhelms the student but they still get quite a bit of information and uh, that's all I really have to say about that I'm very excited for this I know my son is as well so if you have any questions leave them in the comments and don't forget to subscribe I'm gonna try and pump out a lot of our curriculum listings and reviews of what we're going to be using this year. I have a huge one to do on the history and I'm going to show you how I put together that whole thing and all kinds of goodies. So anyways, I appreciate you watching and uh, take care.